I've heard all my life that America is a Christian nation. Is it? You know, I get asked by journalists and students quite often whether the United States is a Christian country. And the simple answer to that is that, no, we're not a Christian country, but we are a country full of Christians. We are culturally a Christian nation, or at least a culturally Protestant nation. But in terms of the law, we are not a Christian nation, nor we, are we a Muslim nation or a Jewish nation. We are a secular country. And perhaps, you know, all that means to some people is, well, you know, we are, Christianity is the majority religion. Um, a lot of our cultural traditions, uh, the traditions of our society and uh, of our, our government, you know, we're associated with this specific religion, and so that's what makes sense. Um, and I think that in many people's minds, the confusion comes from two things. Uh, one, uh, the Constitution quite clearly states that uh, government cannot make any laws respecting an establishment of religion. So the United States cannot declare itself any certain religion. And what we mean by that is that uh, when our Constitution was being drafted, the Founders were heavily influenced by the Enlightenment philosophy, particularly of John Stuart Mill and John Locke. And their beliefs, the beliefs that grew out of that uh, intellectual ferment that we call the Enlightenment, led to a belief in the separation of church and state. Now, students will sometimes also say, well, I don't see the terminology separation of church and state. It's not in our Constitution in, that, in those, that way. But the First Amendment really cannot be read in any other way. What we have is two religion clauses. We have the anti-establishment clause and the free exercise clause. And taken together, those two clauses are a prescription for government neutrality on all matters of religious belief. But 56% of Americans, according to a survey in 2008, think the Constitution does do precisely that, that it, 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 that it does declare Christianity as the official religion. Um, so I think that some of the confusion comes from people simply not knowing what the Constitution says. The second, um, I think, confusion comes from the fact that people confuse the planters with the founders. The planters were people who came over as colonists, many of whom were looking for religious freedom, and they founded uh, religious uh, institutions here that were very closely tied to the state. And so of course you have the group, the Puritans, who you know really saw God starting a covenant with them in the New World. You know, this country was going to be imbued with uh, God's permissions with God's protection and so on and so the success of the country would rise and fall you know upon their obedience to what they saw God calling them to do and so early on in our history we had this you know conflation of the United States being this nation um, that's perhaps a, a nation of God uh, but of course we're talking about the early 1600s compare that to the founders and the late 1700s and they were doing something quite different and the Constitution clearly states that uh, the country is not going to have any official religion at all. Now, students will sometimes also say, well, I don't see the terminology separation of church and state. It's not in our Constitution in that, in those, that way. But the First Amendment really cannot be read in any other way. What we have is two religion clauses. We have the anti-establishment clause and the free exercise clause. And taken together, those two clauses are a prescription for government neutrality on all matters of religious belief and most, but not all, matters of religious observance. So, as I tell my students from time to time, 
government just can't muck around in your soul. Uh, government has to respect your right to believe as you see fit. So then you move into the 19th century and you know the United States became a place where a lot of new faiths, a lot of new sects, and uh, various denominations grew out of the original immigrants that came uh, that came here. And it's this marketplace of various religious faiths that a lot of scholars say have led to the highly religious nature of the United States today. You compare that to a, a place, say, in Scandinavia or um, in the United Kingdom where you have a state church, and without that extra competition, you know, where people can go and find the flavor of religion that really appeals to them, you know, it seems that people uh, have become less religious there, whereas we become more religious here. So that's part of the answer um, of why the United States has become such a religious nation. By removing government from the equation, we created this very robust marketplace, uh, not just the marketplace of ideas that we have under the free speech provisions of the First Amendment, but this marketplace of religions, all competing for people's beliefs. Uh, and we ended up with a much more robust religious uh, approach in America. I mean, it, it has become a uh, an interesting observation when people come to this United to the United States that uh, we are so much more religious as a people than most other Western democratic uh, countries, and that is really a uh, a result of government not messing around with our souls.